Uh, this is a typical reflection that comes back from the cavity. It's the, the phase and am the amplitude and the phase. And as you can see, this is the phase uh, of the cavity after adjustment. And the RF pulse ends here. And when the RF pulse ends, uh, the cavity starts to emit with its, no, uh, its uh, normal uh, uh, resonant frequency. And that emission, its own resonant frequency, is mixed back with the original signal that's being sent to the cavity. And if that turns out to be a straight line, uh, that means that the cavity is exactly on frequency. If the cavity is off frequency, it goes this way or this way. And from fitting that line to a straight line, we understand the difference in frequency and get it back uh, to life. And of course, the amplitude itself, that decay at the end of the cavity after everything's shut down, is the thing that we fit to understand what's the quality factor uh, that's giving onto this cavity after that. And that's how we sense uh, the quenching. Uh, this is a typical measurement at low, low level, and the reason for, for, for this, uh, this low level, that's, there's some serious noise. And uh, here, this is a sample before quenching and after quenching. And uh, <coughs> the cavity and the red line, uh, the system is still very, very long tail. And then after, you go to a rather high field, like 135 millitesla on, on this particular niobium sample, the decay length becomes very fast, and then we distinguish that the cavity starts to uh, quench, and we can measure the quality factor. Uh, at the very beginning of these measurements, uh, we observed several things. First of all, uh, we varied the repetition rate to see if we are changing anything inside the system, heating up the system, and so on and so forth. So for different repetition rate, we couldn't see at all any uh, real change in the cavity. We also changed the pulse length, and with the pulse length, there was a little bit of change, uh, but it's not uh, huge. Uh, two things. We found that the Q of, the ca of, of niobium samples, in particular, has a slope to it, and then it quenches at a rather very low field. This power coming from the klystron, we can go up to about 10 megawatts from that klystron, and we were quenching only at 370 uh, kilo. That corresponds to about 70 millitesla. And we couldn't understand why we are quenching uh, uh, at this level. And that drove us uh, with uh, Choshi's group uh, to write a model for this cavity. And we assumed that the cavity, once you exceed a certain limit on the sample itself, then this portion of the field inside the cavity, which is in a circle, will quench and the rest of the cavity will stay uh, superconducting. And depending on the, uh, on the uh, field level, the amount of quenching on the cavity, or this area of the part that was quenching, will increase gradually as you increase the power. And uh, from that model, uh, we drove this theoretical curve for the quenching limit in the cavity, which fits very, very well except for this slope to the measured data. The problem is uh, it fits perfectly if we assume that the sample temperature is about 7 degree Kelvin rather than 3, or 3.5 three or something like that. And that stayed uh, a puzzle for us uh, for a while. Uh, later on, we definitely learned that this puzzle is very simple. We just simply neglected to shield the cavity mechanically, uh, magnetically. And uh, we underestimated completely the whole idea that we thought that the cavity, uh, because it's short pulse length, all the thermal effects are uh, going to be uh, neglected, uh, was actually false. And the reason it was false because the, uh, without shielding the cavity, the surface resistance was so high, it was high enough that during the pulse of about one and a half microsecond was enough to raise the cavity by about three degree Kelvin. And those three degree Kelvin made all the difference into uh, the measurements. Uh, we started to, uh, in order to, to, to really understand that, we, we, we started to do very careful measurements of the quality factor itself to see how well it matches our simulations. And the first thing we did is that we measured uh, pure copper itself. And we, me we measured pure copper itself without any navium sample. Uh, this was basically the reference for which we used to understand the surface resistance of niobium uh, samples. And then we started to see immediately an effect on the quality factor. The red curve here uh, was some random uh, niobium sample that we got from Fermilab, and uh, it reached the quality factor of about 3, 10 to the 5. Uh, as I mentioned before, the cavity, if the sample has zero resistivity on the 
quality f on, on, on the sample surface reaches about 3.5, 10 to the 5. Uh, and after we started putting the magnetic shielding, uh, the resistance starts to uh, go up. And then we learned that we also need to, uh, if the uh, nebium sample is, is exposed to air for a long time, we have to really bake it and drive gases out uh, to, uh, to do that. And this is the calculated residual resistance based on uh, the quality factor uh, measurements. Uh, it's still rather uh, huge. Although we're working at 11 gigahertz, we didn't expect it to be uh, that much. Now, after we did the magnetic shielding, uh, two things happened immediately. The quenching limit, which was, this is before the magnetic shielding, and this is after the magnetic shielding. And the quenching limit that was close to about 65 or 70 millitesla and that slope, uh, and that slope clearly was caused simply by heating the temperature uh, of the sample up, uh, uh, almost disappeared completely. And we are quenching now around 120 uh, mega, uh, millitesla. Uh, we believe that this is a reasonable number at 11 gigahertz for this sample, but we are going to add a small coil to compensate for the field as well, and I suspect that this will go slightly to 140. And at that level, at 3.5 tesla, I think that's the expected level for uh, niobium. And in that case, I believe we have a system that is uh, quite uh, reasonable uh, to be used in, in, in that regard. Uh, the beautiful, uh, we put uh, a sample of uh, ma uh, magnesium diboride into that system, and the beautiful thing, and even if it was not magnetically isolated, the quality factor of the cavity reached the theoretical value exactly, 3.5, 10 to the 5 approximately. And that means that the surface resistance of this magnesium diboride is so low that actually in our system we can hardly uh, characterize that. However, the quenching field came out to be approximately 25 to 30 uh, millitesla only on this particular uh, niobium sample uh, that was put on top of sapphire. Uh, this is another sample that was measured, uh, that was pr provided by Chioshi's group. And uh, again, uh, we found out uh, that the characteristic impedance of this sample uh, is almost uh, reaches the 3.5, 10 to the 5, which is the uh, maximum value that this cavity uh, can uh, provide. And it has a very high quenching uh, limit uh, on uh, the field. And again, uh, the quenching limit, uh, again, even in this uh, system, came out to be a plus 20 and so on and so forth. I'm sure that Shoshi will talk about this particular sample in a much more uh, details. But uh, in conclusion, uh, we have demonstrated a system which can precisely measure the quenching field uh, up to 300 or 400 millitesla easily. And we can even go further than that by modifying some of the directional coupler because we have plenty of power. We throw 90% of our power uh, away. And it turns out that magnetic shielding is crucial for niobium residual resistivity at X band. Uh, pulse heating was the main cause that caused this. Uh, it's our ignorance uh, of the fact. I mean, we are just a hobbyist in this business. Uh, that turns out that we uh, didn't shield the, the field. Uh, and the precision of the residual resistance is currently at level of 0.1 milliohm, and we are going to push that uh, measurements to be very, very precise. And uh, not only we are going to be able, hopefully, to characterize the quenching limit, but hopefully, with precise measurement of the Q, we can also characterize the surface resistance. Thank you very much for your attention.